Alright, welcome back to our channel. Alright, today we shall be talking about git push, which is one of the ways that we send our code online. Now that we've finished making our changes in our local repository, in our branch of our link edits, uh, we realize that now the whole point of actually making the branch is so that we can make changes to our code and then um, send it back online or in another repository so that we can have it merge. So what we're going to do is actually push this up online and what we're going to do is by typing git push dash u origin uh, origin being the the link of our forked repository and we get an error here the branch is telling us you know what you don't really need to add the link of the repository but you also need to add for which branch uh, that you want to send this so you it will give us an error message and also give us a solution so we'll type a uh, git push dash dash set dash upstream uh, so that we can store our upstream in our git and then we'll add origin and then we'll add the branch of the fork which is link dash edit so once we hit enter we'll have our fork sending all this information up onto the ripple however this origin like i told you is actually just the link of the fork that we do have it's automatically set by git as the name or like the shorthand name of that link and once we go online we realize uh, and go to our repo and refresh it and look in our links dash link dash edits uh, branch our edits uh, have been made and we have actually just one commit ahead of the master branch of our original uh, repository so what we're going to do now is actually compare the code that is there by clicking the compare and pull but request button and then there will ask for the maintainers of our original software whether they should uh, actually allow for this new edit to be added so what we'll do is i will look at our comment section and it's all written in markdown however we can check off this list by adding the x's to uh, the particular brackets a markdown is something too that's interesting uh, however we're just going to check on what's right so we'll check our sol uh, our options that are available and we make sure that we're providing full information and we can actually see the information we are submitting by clicking the review tab and by going back to the right we're able to make more changes to our comment section so we'll add some proper uh, messaging uh, to allow the person reviewing our pull request to find out the meaning, the purpose and the changes that are involved actually in our pull request so that they are not lost into finding out the reason why this person made this pull request or figuring out why the code changes are so. So that's the whole purpose of uh, the comment section to make reviewing of code a lot easier so um, we need to write some full content uh, comments that leave no questions to the person who is uh, actually maintaining that particular code base uh, for them to make a proper analysis and also to give proper feedback that's one of the things that you will see so um, once we review again uh, our changes that we've made we realize that uh, we're on the right track so whatever we actually don't need wherever we don't have answers uh, in this uh, response template we'll just need to make corrections of it and then uh, we'll have something that's minimal and something that is acceptable by the maintainers so right now we'll just add some changes to show uh, what's happening in this pull request and how they can replicate and see uh, what particular changes we've made and how they can test them uh, the good thing is that I don't have to write a particular test for the change I've made. It was mainly editorial and just making a simple change. However, for some of the changes that we do have, we actually realize that um, they need to have proper tests. Let's say if they were in JavaScript or any other language, uh, we sometimes have to make those tests. So we'll complete up our, our form, filling in the necessary information. Um, and then we'll submit the pull request by clicking the pull request button. So we will share that we have also made some local tests that we've done. Um, that's why we're able to recreate the, the particular two steps above 
uh, to show what to do in case you're testing the changes and then we'll just add a simple change log that uh, can be put in uh, the, the notes of the upcoming version of the software. So we'll just copy that and paste down here and since it's the same and then we'll preview um, our notes to the maintainers. If we see that actually everything is in place uh, then we are actually good to go. So we'll just hit the create pull request button and our message will be sent to the maintainers of the software. So the pull request is in, in the proper place that it should be and we can see a number of other pull requests that have been made including ours. So you can actually view it again, see if you've made any errors, make any edits to the comments and notes again so that you allow a proper review of um, the changes you've made. Now one of the things that uh, agitate us as people who contribute to open source software is that sometimes we're not patient. But I urge you to be patient whenever you submit a pull request, allow time for the review of your code and allow time for the maintainers to do some testing. So don't go calling every five minutes, just make to see whether everything is okay. But it's also okay to ask maybe after a couple of weeks or days if something has not been uh, pulled in. So thank you for watching the video. Um, please ask any questions that you feel uncomfortable or please submit anything that we should be adding to the channel. Thank you for watching. We'll be finishing up our series uh, shortly. So we hope to catch you in the next few videos.